Hey fools, T here with another one. And uh, this one will be about, you know, uh, factors into what it takes to make a console successful or have a successful launch or a successful lifespan for a console. Cause you'll hear all the time uh, from gamers, uh, YouTubers, commenters that, oh, you need this and you need this and you need that and mix these ingredients together and you'll have a successful console. Uh, you heard that uh, for Wii U and obviously in hindsight, it's easy to say, you know, see, you didn't have all these things. So this is why it wasn't successful. Um, and, but the switch kind of changes that because the switch doesn't currently have all those things that there's no guarantees on the horizon. It's going to have those things and it's selling pretty well it's consistently selling pretty well it doesn't have the crazy power and it doesn't have the big you know uh western third party support not yet anyway and it's still selling really well um and you know that basically the premise of this video i just wanted to talk about how there's no guarantees i kind of made a video about this before um it was a longer video and i think i had like i was showing my con my games and all this stuff and i was talking about how you know, there's no, you know, there's no uh, rules. There's no specific ingredients um, uh, that will guarantee you success in the, in the console space. And, you know, I was showing examples of that, but I, I left one out, I believe, um, I, or I didn't at least go into it too much. Um, and that is uh, the GameCube and, you know, the Xbox original uh, OG Xbox in comparison. I think I talked a little bit about it. I was talking about how the OG Xbox only sold two million more, and but I, it sold two million more, and it but it had all the things that supposedly would you know guarantee you success. Now, obviously, Microsoft struggles in Japan, and that's understandable, um, even to this day. And but the OG Xbox, so the OG Xbox can get a pass in Japan for not selling well. But what about the rest of the world? Um, it had all the great sports titles um, from EA and stuff, so it should have done better in the UK. It had really good um, to excellent um, exclusives uh, coming from Sega. It was basically the Dreamcast 2. It had all those great uh, Sega games that came over. They had to deal with Sega exclusively. And you got like um, you know, you got, uh, was it Virtual Fighter? You got um, uh, Panzer Dragoon, you got Shinmu, uh, Shinmu 2, and uh, the GT, Sega GT stuff. You had all this, you know, cool stuff coming from Sega. Um, and you had the first console uh, with uh, broadband uh, internet, you know, high speed. Uh, and they, you know, they forced consumers to do that. And for Xbox Live, and that was a good thing and so you had and you had you know big dvds uh discs medium for the games so you had you know comparable to what sony was doing um uh dvd dvd playback was a little wonky because they kind of forced you to buy a remote and i think they did that because uh they wanted to offset the cost of the dvd format because they have to pay sony or they had to pay sony um for using DVDs. So the way they paid for it was to make you buy a remote to access the DVD function, which, you know, kind of sucked, but I understood it. I didn't, I never had a problem with it. I didn't care for that stuff in my game console. Anyway, I had a really nice DVD player at the time, Pioneer. So yeah, it just like, um, so it had all those things. It had, uh, you know, and had obviously had money behind it, it was Microsoft and it still only managed to push out 2 million more consoles in the GameCube, which everybody called a failure. And so I was just like, I think that's the really good example of how, you know, all these things, you can have all these factors in like, like even if you look at, I mean, look at the, uh, the Xbox, uh, one right now. Um, it has, well, it has everything. I mean, there's obviously other factors into why it didn't sell well. It's a hundred dollars more expensive. 
uh, they kind of forced the connect thing. Um, it was a weird kind of uh, rollout because of the TV stuff. And it's just, so it started off bad, but it should have came around, you know, um, much in the way that uh, PlayStation came around, PlayStation 3 came around eventually. Um, and I guess that still could happen for uh, Xbox One, but I'm not sure at this point because it's got a lot of stiff competition. Uh, PS4 still sells uh, pretty well to this day, and now the Switch is coming in and still in some thunder and selling really well as well. So, yeah, I mean that to me that is the best example. Um, I bring up the Switch because, like I said earlier, it didn't have it doesn't have all those factors. The online right now is super bare bones. Um, you know, there's no voice chat. You can't even message anybody. Uh, it's little, you know, cartridges that likely cost more based ba based on the size of cart you need for your game. And a lot of these games need big carts, um, you know, so there's that. Uh, the third party, Western third party isn't there right now. Eastern third party is starting to come in. Uh, but it again, all those factors and it's still selling really well. And obviously there's reasons why it's selling well, but I'm just saying that there there's no determining things uh, for your console to sell well. Uh, Sony, uh, they just, you know, they have their finger on the pulse and that's why they're going to sell well. They're we're a big electronics company. They have that brand that recognition. Um, Sony used to make really good products, you know, back in the day and everybody had a Sony. Um, something a walkman or a little beatbox or whatever um and it was just a well-known brand so and they they have entertainment uh they have their entertainment company because they have movie studios and music uh, recording studios and um you know multimedia or media stuff like that so they're used to um you know the space of entertainment and they're better fitted for for it better than anybody so yeah, I mean, so, you know, my, my just my main thing is that there's no uh, surefire way for your console to sell. Obviously, there are things that you pretty much have to do, um, you know, at the bare minimum. But there's nothing out there that will determine that your console is going to do well. Um at least until at least it's since its inception having sony on your box has you know helped you uh having sony on your box means you're doing well because every sony console that's come out has done really well um other than like the the handheld uh vita psp did it sold pretty well but the games didn't sell so or uh, most of the games didn't sell is what they would like so Anyway, yeah, that's basically what I want to talk about here. What do you think about that? Do you disagree? Do you think there's definitely ways to make your console sell well? Obviously, marketing helps, but if you're marketing, you know, if you're marketing a product that's not that appealing, it doesn't matter how good your marketing is. So, anyway, that's it for this one. Thank you for watching and listening, and now see you fools next time. Peace out. Oh, yeah, one more thing. Play Nintendo, fools.